In this video, we are briefly looking at best practices when coding in Python. So let's first create a new file and let's rename it into best practices.ipython notebook. And let's revisit our um, very first example of a Python program. So example, and the example was finding the average of all even numbers in a list. And let's use the same numbers list we used previously. So these are the numbers 7, 11, 8, 5, 3, 12, 2, 6, 9, 10, 1, and 4. And our very first um, solution approach um, goes as follows. We write a for loop by saying for number in numbers. And then for every individual number in the list, we check if it is even by saying if number modulo divided by two has no rest. And then we want to do something for every even number. And here we need um, two helper variables. So a variable called total and another one called count, and we set both of them to zero. And then we say, for every even number we encounter while looping over the numbers list, we say our new total is going to be our old total plus the current number, because it is an even number. And also our new count is going to be our old count plus one, because every time we encounter a uh, even number, we just add one to our count of even numbers. And then to find the average, we will simply go ahead and take our total of even numbers and divide it by the count of even numbers. And that will give 7.0. So let's first um, look at this example a code here and try to um, yeah, see if, if we think this is a good approach or why this may not be a good approach. So first of all, it is of course a good approach because it works. The code, um, yeah, it, it, it works, it is correct. Um, and also it generalizes. So if I want to calculate the average of a different list of even numbers, all I have to do is I have to change the numbers up here and the code will still continue to work. Okay, so um, that is a very good um, first solution. However, when we write programs, uh, one way of um, um, analyzing code is always uh, to look at um, how readable it is. And by readability, I mean if another program or if we ourselves look at this code, maybe in you know a month from now, how likely is it that we will immediately understand what the code does? And here it is probably not so obvious. So even an experienced programmer would probably need half a minute or so, maybe a minute to read through all of this and figure out what the code does. So the code itself does not communicate what it does in a clear way. And um, also there are a couple of other uh, things um, that are not that good, but I will uh, talk about them um, as we correct the code and improve on it. So let's um, do the following. Um, Instead of looping over all the numbers and then inside the for loop um, have some if condition and uh, do some calculations, we could break down or we could view the problem in a different way. So a different solution approach could be as follows. So let's write alternative. Um, and let's say first create a new list um, with only the even numbers. And then second, um, sum up the new list. Third, count um, the number of elements in the new list. And then calculate the average. Okay, so in the current solution, what we do is we do basically all of them, all of that together in one big giant step. So um, this um, for loop does two things. It A, goes over all the numbers and then 
uh, it filters them out and then while filtering we are also doing the calculation so we're doing all of the steps together in one big step and that is uh, not so good so let's uh, try to um, see how we can use our alternative way of viewing the problem and rewrite it okay so let's first go ahead and uh, let's uh, simply evaluate the numbers list here so we have it right here and now let's say create the first step here says create a new list with only the even numbers there are a couple of ways of how to do that but i will now introduce a new concept and the new concept goes by the name um, list comprehension okay so this is a compact syntax to derive new list objects out of existing ones. So this is what a list comprehension means. And now let's see an example of how we write that. So in order to, to create a new list out of an existing list, we will write brackets first because we want to create a list object. And then inside this list uh, object, we will go up here and we will simply copy paste the four line um, of the code cell above without the colon. Simply copy paste that in here. And now let's go ahead and on the left hand side before the word for let's write out number singular and let's execute this and we see that um, this syntax um, derives a new list object out of the existing list object called numbers and every element that is kept in the new list object is just the number as it comes from the old numbers list okay so now the first thing we will do to make this a little bit more readable instead of using number singular we will now use simply the letter n okay so um, normally my recommendation is to spell out variable names but when you do use a comprehension to make something compact to make something look compact then um, you could uh, also use um, shorter variable names for example simply n okay and now um, on the right side to numbers we will simply go ahead and we will copy paste the if logic without the colon colon and because the variable number was renamed into n let's also simply um, replace number with simply n and let's execute this and this um, expression um, as we see creates a new list object with only the even numbers in it Okay, so this is like, uh, you can read this just like a mathematical rule. Okay, so this basically says, create a new list object and take um, out of the list numbers, all the ends one by one and only keep the ones that are even. This is basically what it says. And now what we will do is, we will go ahead and we will assign this new list object to a variable and we will give it a good name, a name that we can easily understand and such a name in this case would be simply events okay so without looking at the entire or in the details of the list comprehension on the right hand side um, what we see here is that we're deriving something out of numbers and the result is going to be called events so as an um, experienced programmer if you read this we will probably understand this right away we'll say okay we are you know filtering out the odd numbers so to say and we will just keep the events okay so let's go ahead the next step would be sum up the list so summing something up summing the elements of a list up is something that already sounds very trivial to do so shouldn't there be something built into python that does that for us because i think it's not a good idea if we have to write a for loop every time we want to sum up a list of numbers and indeed um, there is of course um, a built-in function so let's go to python docs the library reference to the built-in functions and indeed there is a function called sum and the sum function takes input several inputs and the first one goes by the name iterable what that means is something that uh, we will learn in a future um, video for now let's just uh, define that an iterable is anything we can loop over such as a list and then it says sums um, the items in the iterable 
And I think that's already enough to understand what the function does, okay? So let's go ahead and um, use the sum function and let's call it and give it maybe the numbers list, the original numbers list. And we get the number 78. So that is the sum of all the numbers in the original list. And if we replace numbers with evens, then we get, um, so what is going wrong here? Well, I have to uh, rerun the cell because in the, the last time when I run it, I didn't have the evens uh, is set to um, here. So now it works. And now the sum of all the events is 42. And this kind of makes sense. We already had this number um, in the other video where we developed the solution that we show above here. So that is now an easy way of how we can calculate the sum of a list. And now uh, for step three, we want to go ahead and count the number of elements in the list. And for that, there is also a built-in function. So let's go back up here to the list of all the built-in functions. And here is a function called len for length. And len takes uh, one argument here, or one input, and we say it returns the length, the number of items of an object. Okay, so um, let's go back and simply try it out. So len of events, and it's just six because there are, um, as we see, let's maybe put, let's read uh, the events list right here. So here we have six elements inside the events list. So len with events, it's six, okay? And now if you want to calculate the average, we could uh, do it as easy as uh, as this. We could go ahead and simply write sum of events and divide that by the length of events. And if we execute that, we also get 7.0, okay? So let's maybe um, write that in one cell. Let's copy paste this here, um, the list comprehension. And then now let's also copy paste the um, calculation of the average. And let's also give it a name. So let's simply call it average equals. And then maybe with uh, a space in between, let's simply read the variable average. And this will also, of course, give us uh, 7.0. Okay, so, um, and if we look at this cell, as compared to this cell, the cell below is a lot is a lot easier to read, right? So um, first we take the numbers list, we take the events out of them, we give it a the variable a nice name, and in the next step, we calculate the average. And uh, for those of us, uh, the math nerds who want to understand what an average is, well, it's the sum of the events divided by the number of the events. And this is basically using built-in functions and built-in functions will become second nature. So you will be able to read the, these kind of expressions very easy, um, easily in the future. So by looking at this cell, this is very easy to read. There's a second advantage. So for built-in functions, we know they are correct, okay? So um, these functions have been part of Python for a very long time, and they have been tested um, by many, many people, and they are in use by many, many people around the world. And uh, if there were a, an error in the sum or the len function, we would know. Secondly, also, they are usually a lot faster in execution. So in a beginner's course, this is not a very uh, important topic, but in the long run, um, you should uh, know that um, whenever you have to write a for loop on your own, uh, for loops tend to, for technical reasons, they are a bit slower. Um, if you use a built-in function that does also a loop in the background, so we can think of summing up the events, this here will also do um, a for loop in the background somehow but these functions are highly optimized at a very technical level so these uh, built-in functions also have a, w a way better runtime okay so these are a couple of advantages so the most important um, um, advantage being that this code cell is easier to read and maintain in the future if we have to make changes but also um, it is uh, with a higher probability it's correct and of course um, the code is running faster okay 
So this is the, the kind of code that uh, we are aiming at. So um, in future videos, whenever there is a trade-off between different ways of uh, solving a problem, I will always give you the pros and cons of different solutions. And uh, this way uh, you will learn uh, about best practices. An important best practice that uh, you should already know, it's maybe um, search for that on the internet, is the so-called uh, PEP8 standard. So PEP8 in the Python world, and let's uh, take the link to the official documentation. This is a document um, that is a so-called Python enhancement proposal, PEP for short. And these are official documents that uh, people can write and submit to Python, to the Python Software Foundation. And then there is a peer review process. So um, for some time, uh, many programmers and people from the Python community will look at this. And um, in these PEPs, um, usually these are specifications of things. Um, they um, have suggestions of how to make Python better um, and explain certain concepts that Python is built on. And uh, PEP8 is a very old PEP. It goes back to the year 2001, as you see. And PEP8 gives you many, many rules of how you should format code so that it is um, with a high chance um, uh, maintainable and better. And one example that uh, I will take out of this document, if we go to intendation, here it says use four spaces per level of intendation. Okay. So um, this is why we use four spaces and not one or two and uh, some other languages use eight spaces per level of intendation. Okay, so the Python community at some point decided let's all use four spaces so that we all write the same um, code basically. And of course there are many, many other um, um, things on this list as well. I would recommend to glimpse over this uh, for now. You won't understand um, so much here in the beginning, but from time to time you should uh, go back and review this. Um, understanding and applying PEP8 is a first step to writing a uh, good Python code. And uh, so we will also um, get back to this um, PEP here a couple of times throughout this lecture. Okay, but um, this concludes um, our brief discussion on um, yeah, finding maybe a better solution to an already solved problem in this course.